Welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Hey folks, John Duffin back at you. Duffin Media, welcome back to another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is the home, the place, the platform to help you find your best, most true, authentic business voice. Heck, your best, most true voice. Get what you want, find what you need. What are our 2024 as, uh, aspirations? Oh, help people to make billions of dollars, find a person of their dreams. We're still tightening up uh, the details of that. But what we get to do is we bring people on who walk the walk. Great news, folks. We got somebody back for a part two. And that's a very select group. I get my friend, business colleague, and overall force for good, Ed Fordyce. Welcome back to the show, Bubba. Thanks. And most importantly, you might not be able to see that, but that's oh, the most God. important thing, man. And in, in like three weeks, I'm going to be a pop pop. And that is mind blowing to me. I was going to say for a lot of reasons, uh, you, you, it just sounds so, so suck up, but I'll risk it. It's like, you don't look, you don't look or the age of it. You certainly, you know what I mean? You have the disposition for it. Yeah. It's really Thanks. So I love it, man. It's, it's the best job that I've ever applied for and the best business that I'm starting. And one of my goals was to be the, like annoying grandfather that, um, you know, breaks all the rules. How so? Says, what are you going to teach this? What are you teaching this one that's breaking all the rules? I want to know. Yeah, don't tell your mother, don't tell your father we did this today. Whether it's jumping out of an airplane or eating fire or eating too much candy, I'm breaking all the rules, man. <laughs> yeah. The glee in your face, folks. If you're listening to this, you'll have to take my word for it. But as you're watching, you can clearly see the glee in future Pop Pop's face, um, which is fun. One of the reasons I wanted to have Ed back uh, is, is aside from the fact he's just a damn good guy with so much great things going on. One of the things that, that I look forward to is progression. That's a big deal to me is watching not just businesses progress, but relationships progress, rationale progress. I think if you're making transformative efforts to make yourself better, and, and all that stuff, it doesn't really serve you if you're just sitting on all the information, you know? So I, I love the fact, folks, if you had heard the first episode, and I, you damn well better have, um, then you know that, that, that our guy uh, has overcome a lot to get to where he is today. Ed, what would you say, in addition to being a pop-up, what would you say, one future, um, are one of the more surprising things in regards to the journey for you so far? True. The, I would say the amount of human beings that I get to interact with. Uh, and that would be one. Another thing would be the, the amount of simplicity. Mm-hmm that is just starting to come into my world and my life hmm. and just living by complexity is the enemy of execution. I, I that's how I can oversimplify hmm. it. And I would say that without being too cliche, it's like today, like to simplify everything, like today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the first day of your new business. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday or a decade ago. And uh I'm I am so amazed by what human beings are capable of. Mm-hmm. Um that's uh, that's probably the biggest, I think you said surprise or exactly. High. Yeah, it's just it it blows me away when I when I see what I would say ordinary folks mm-hmm. uh do it. I'll just give you a quick couple things that just couple of examples, days, right? And we right? won't ask people, but please, yes. Yeah, just number one. And I know we talked about this on the last episode. Yeah. Sunday, like for me, I'm like the most important thing for me is I celebrated 21 years of sobriety and clean time. I mean, oh. I'm 
I'm a cokehead dead in a crack house. Mm -hmm. And now I'm hanging out. Seems like, like that, hanging out with my friend, John, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the other thing, the, uh, the unsung heroes, um, mm -hmm. my uh, beloved high school football coach who uh, was uh, outside of my family, my first mentor, mm -hmm. my first guy that believed in me. Mm -hmm. He made me his captain. Like that was a pivotal time in my life where I started to notice my blessings hmm. and they weren't the straight A student blessings. I didn't live in green country, which was like the hoity toity neighborhood and in, in Newtown square at the time. Sure. But man, I got you. I, I was the captain. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I get to express myself and influence people and, and get the most out of people, pull it out of them. So I'm rambling, but man, this life is such, is so precious and so beautiful. And the rewards, man, like I could literally break down and cry right now. Like when I look at them, as Tony Robbins would say, we have no problems. Mm. Dude, you and I, you and I were 2,500 miles away or something. We Absolutely. get to connect like I'm sitting in your living room. Right. You know, two guys that maybe a year ago, I don't even know if we knew each other. And I consider you like a great friend. I can't wait to Likewise. see you in a couple of weeks. Like me, yeah, I never, we've never met each other in person. Right. That's Amazing. the weird thing to me. That, that how, and I know it's true. Uh, that that's amazing to me. I want to go. I want to peel back a couple things. Of what you said, which I love, all of it. First off, you talked about simplicity versus complexity. Like if I'm using the right words, how you're able to simplify. So. What do you think the reasons are that you were able to do that as a, whether as opposed to before or at all? So the best thing I can do is tell a story. Literally two minutes ago, five minutes ago mm -hmm. on one of the real estate masterminds, right. somebody uh, plugged in uh, and I won't waste time looking for it, but I don't want to mess up the words either. Yeah, uh, go ahead. And the, 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 the post was, I have a problem. I'm anxious. I actually am scared to call strangers. Mm -hmm. Anyone struggling with this? And my response was, it's not a problem. It's called being human. And there are mm -hmm. so many other ways to do this business than calling strangers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I said, like, I'm happy to, ho happy to hop on a call with you mm -hmm. because there's so many ways to do this business. And Many real estate agents, which is a big part of my business, mm -hmm. they come into guru land and it's like, here, here's the phone. If you want to be successful, you better learn to call. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way. Don't get me wrong. That's a great way to drive business. But what I found over the years is the reality is most aren't wired for that. So mm -hmm. the first step in simplicity is find out what your natural strength is. What is your God-given strength? Mm -hmm. I go back to my recruiting days. Like, and again, if if you are a master on the phone, mm -hmm. which by the way, I could call anybody right now and say, hey, it's Ed Fordis from ABC Realty, looking mm -hmm. at your production, would love to get together with you, blah, 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 and make you say yes on the phone. Mm -hmm. Like, I've just been doing it enough. Was that always... Before you continue, was that always for you? Or did you, I'm always curious with people that are, are good with phone techniques, is that something that you were naturally good at? Or is that something that we, that you believe is teachable? It can be teachable, but this is what I found. Right. That I acquired the skill mm -hmm. to get you to say yes on the phone to me. Mm -hmm. But what you were really saying is, Yes, now I can get off this phone and text you two days later that I'm not going to meet with you. Mm -hmm. So I found it to be very inefficient for me. Mm -hmm. And I looked at uh, our, what are my natural skills? I'm great face to face. Mm -hmm. I'm great in front of a room. Mm -hmm. So although I was being told you got to make your calls, I'm like, I'm, I literally did said this. I'm like, I'm not going to make the calls. Mm -hmm. That's what the four guys before me did. And they all got fired. I think there's yeah. a better way. <laughs> right. So, and again, I'm not I'm not putting down anybody that cold calls. No. Or, Dude, if that works for you, man, go do it. Crush mm -hmm. it. If it doesn't suck the soul out of you, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's the, the, to answer your question, take time to go, what is my natural strength? Where can I shine brightly to make it more efficient? And I'll even use the word easy. Got it. Yeah. So I'm curious. I love that. So for me, I'm curious too. And I think even in terms of like the ability of the way that you've personally transformed to me is significant because I, I remember like, and we talked about it at length. I would just like, in terms of more than anything, a quick memory refresher, not career stats. I got them, but more to me, the path that got you feeling that you're able to stand tall, so to speak. You talked about the 20, the 21 years, which is magic to me. Uh, It's folks. It's one of the things that Ed and I have in common and it's just neither one of us knew that about the other person. And so it's just one of those magic things that I'm just still over the moon grateful to have the gift. And when I hear other people have it as well, too. What got you to stand up again? Yeah. So I'm going to say that uh, we always have reference points in our life. Right. We can look back. Markers. So the first thing I did was I remember my brain go, wait a minute, like I'm a state championship pitcher. I was captain yeah. of the football team. Like we all have greatness in us. And also we, my first step was to look back and go, let me look at a reference point here. I'm not yep. a loser. Yep. I, I'm I'm a really good person mm-hmm. that has developed uh, or, or had this gene where, whoa, I love the effects of booze and cocaine. <laughs> and It stopped working for me. It started hurting me and killing. Mm -hmm. Then I would say that uh, in November of 2004, Mm -hmm. I had uh, purchased a ticket to attend uh, Unleash the Power Within with Anthony Robbins. And this is when he was only getting about 3,500 people to his event. And I had not quite a front row seat, but close enough. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I was sober about a year at right. this point. And I remember just going, I I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like I can do that. Mm-hmm. And from there, I fell in love with, I, I, with a lot of help, I just transformed my own life. Mm-hmm. I want to transform other people's lives. I want to, I want to serve people. I, I, I want to do the, I want to do what he's doing. And right. but what, it, what it gave me, what it, it, it gave me this, I, w- with the techniques that he teaches was the foundation. And I didn't even know it at the time for build your brain, mm-hmm. build your body, build your business, build your brand. Four B's. Yeah. And what, starting with up here. So mm-hmm. when I when I started to realize, you know, the both the brain chemistry side of things mm-hmm. and the heart side of things, mm-hmm. and then the the machine starting with my blood and oxygen that I could build, mm-hmm. whew, that's when everything shifted, man. I love it. I know we covered this, you and me, privately. Was the event that you were at Unleash the Power within in 2004, was that in Orlando? <clears throat> no, that was in Secaucus, New Jersey at the no. Metal Expo Center. Yeah, all right. So, Yeah, the first time that I crewed for mm-hmm. Anthony Robbins mm-hmm. was uh, either in, I think it was in Orlando mm-hmm. in 2004. That's the one I attended. Yep. Tell me again what year? 2005. Jeez. So here's what I remember about the event that I attended in Orlando. Uh, aside from the fact, fe- in addition, it was great and all that stuff. But logistics, that's that's all I'm focusing on. Like, I remember, I remember doing the mad dash because it was in a convention center. So it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't in an arena uh, at the time. And I can remember you did the mad dash to run to the good seats yeah. that they would open the door. I don't think I was ever faster than than maybe those two days uh, where I was hauling to, to make sure that I got as close as I could. 
<laughs> and I remember how transformative it was for me. One of the things that I find really impressive about you amongst a lot of things is this. And that's why I wanted to take the step back a little bit in regards to propelling forward. Look, folks, if you don't know, uh, Ed has built a real estate career, a real estate coaching career, uh, has been with two of the larger real estate organizations in America and has also morphed into becoming a private coach. Question for you is even getting knocked around and being able to stand again. Um, and you were talking about having the seeds planted uh, at an Anthony Robbins con. So do a lot of people. What do you think it was that propelled you to be able to take the steps to actually do something with the information. Yeah, the, again, getting in, being as authentic as I could be inside right. mm -hmm. and using some of the tools mm -hmm. that were, were given. Mm -hmm. And not being persuaded by anyone, including a boss, a CEO, of veering off of that. I wrote North Star. What was my okay. North yeah. Star? Yeah. Knowing what my purpose and my passion is. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept me going. And I just heard like the, the I think something that I struggled with uh, and honestly struggled with up until just recently is, yeah, sure. you know, we come up, we, we overcome that obstacle and we mm -hmm. get the training we, and we think that life is going to be, uh, is, is going to be a walk in the park mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. the acceptance, the acceptance is just the way like you and I started our conversation before we went live. It's just like, days. I accept all days. Mm -hmm. Some days are great. Some days are mediocre. Some days suck. Right. And it doesn't matter if I've got a dollar in the bank or a million in the bank, yeah. a billion in the bank. Life happens. Mm -hmm. And I know that no matter what, it's just like the program. It's one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten more solid that what I do and who I am are two different things. Do I interchange them? Yeah. Or do I include, uh, you know, maybe combine them? Right. Yeah. But it doesn't define me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't define my soul. Okay. And who I am. That's been, that's been a big, big change for me, knowing that no matter what, I, I just heard this with Ed Milet and Andy Frizzella. They, yeah. they were talking about their struggles. Mm-hmm. Like, and everybody would look at them, whatever, the Lamborghinis, the Bentleys, the this, the that, the mansions, right. the, the jets. Mm -hmm. They're still human beings. They still hurt. They mm -hmm. still get their feelings hurt. They still get rejected. They still have, how many people have you known where you thought, man, that guy or that woman, mm -hmm. nothing could ever take them down. Next thing you know, they're totally broke. Right. Right. And more people than I care to admit. And one of the reasons that today's episode matters so much to me, you just hit on several, but I'll identify the whole purpose of this, like we talk about is the art to authenticity. It would be tough to be fully authentic and act as, let me say this better. I was about to say something, which is actually true, that the acting as if every day is a great day kind of lies into the sense of they're just days and the acknowledgement, right? But not acknowledging present struggles, to me, I tend to chafe, I tend to recoil when I catch people that never, ever, ever have an issue because it's, it, it's I have found for myself personally, not only can I absolutely acknowledge what you said from my own personal vantage point in 2024. But what I would say is also too, you get to a certain age, and I'll speak for me, you get to a certain age 
And it's like, you've either got family, you've, you've got close friends, you've got people around you. It would be asking a lot that you don't have things that are not throwing you a little bit. Again, the reason I have you here is because it's you. It, it's not that you could just miss, you know, magically solve them, but it's how do you continue to proceed? How do you continue to keep walking the walk, trudging the road, to use one of our expressions? You know what I mean? How do you keep doing it? And Ed, I really think when I when you brought up Ed Milet and um oh and Eddie Frizzella ah. Uh, Amongst others, I want to hear that because it's like it makes everything else so powerful. Yeah. How do you incorporate that into your own practice? Yeah, so it's it's so cool, and this is perfect timing because I wrote down a couple mm -hmm. things. Right. That uh, the questions I would ask, whether I was mm -hmm. speaking from a stage yeah. or with some of these people that I coach, they appear to have everything. The mansion right, in Ocean sure. City, the mansion in Lower Marion, mm -hmm. more money, investments, mm -hmm. yachts. Mm -hmm. The questions that I can ask them mm -hmm. that always work is, what is the biggest conflict in your life right now? Mm -hmm. What is your biggest fear right now? And what does a quantum leap look like? like for you at this phase of your life mm -hmm. and and literally like it i've and i think this comes with age yeah like it if i went to an event and the mr or mrs uh guru was signing books mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i literally would hand them a card and say i'd love to hear what your biggest conflict or fear is right now mm -hmm. give me a call as a friend mm -hmm. When years ago, well, not years ago, in 2020, uh, when I was with KW and yeah. COVID hit and everything shut down, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I I emailed Gary Keller and I just said, hey, dude, I know you got a lot on your plate. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that probably a guy like you doesn't really have, really have anybody going, hey, man, how are you doing? Right. And I emailed, I'm like, how right. you doing? Here's my number if you want to call and talk as yeah. a friend. And whether it was him replying or somebody else, he was like, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you like thinking of me. Yeah. You know, but like, that's where we all, mm. I love, I love the, the level playing field mm -hmm. that we all can choose to be. Mm -hmm. We're all here to love and serve each other. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're all in this journey and we're all doing the best we can. And we all have conflict. We all have fear. Like we all have this stuff. And when I am at my best, dude, that's where I operate from. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, this journey is never going to end for me. I would love to say that the Ed that you see here yeah. is the Ed that's, this is 24-7. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not, man. And uh, I'm working at, how do I, how do I become even more authentic mm -hmm. and use, uh, I'll give this example. And then you can, you can say, all right, here we're going next. I, I decided to have three voices in my head. <laughs> oh, okay. I've got a lot so of voices in my head. Like a VIP club of voices. But, I'm only going to choose you three. All right. Talk to me here. My question always is how do I be really hard on myself and others? Okay. And be really kind and gentle at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. So I have three voices in my head real quick. One is Wayne Dyer. Oh, thank you. Okay, bro. But just a beautiful voice in his head. Like, right. Ed, plug in the source. Mm -hmm. You know, you you are a gift. You are this. You are that. You know, use your I am statements. Look at all you've mm -hmm. overcome. Mm -hmm. All right. of this. The next is, uh, I would say, Jesus, God. Uh, you can, anybody that doesn't believe is cool. You can say your higher self. Right. And this is something that talks to me and says, like, I created you perfectly just the way you are, my beloved son. Mm -hmm. Like you are perfect. Like right. I, I, I look down at you and just, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I created you. Mm -hmm. That's the second voice. Now the third voice is David Goggins. <laughs> and he's saying, Hey boy, get yeah. up, yep. get moving. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Go help people. Run another mile. Do another rep. And that's what works for me, mm -hmm. right? Because one of if I only use one of them, mm -hmm. 
it's not going to do me any good. Mm -hmm. I'm either going to be beating myself up too much or I'm going to be too like, ah, I'm just going to lay on the couch today and stay in this mm -hmm. state of depression or low self. Oh, right. Apathy or whatever. Or yeah. No, man. Get up and move. Mm -hmm. Get up and go. How have you acquired... And I know it's a work in progress because everything is like it's, it's how have you acquired the skill to be able to know which voice you choose at a given moment? Yeah. Now I, I'll yeah. say it better more than know which voice, like yeah. actually use that voice and then run with it. How do you know? How, how have you owned that? Yeah. So on a normal day, it's just to thine own self be true. Right. Um, so how do I do it? So I, I, I'm saying this to, uh, I've just, this is like something that just, I call it a God shot or a right. divine download. Just all of a sudden it came to me one day. And what I'm telling the guys in the brotherhood mm -hmm. is uh, uh, one guy, his name's Rob Lawrence. I said, a Rob Lawrence that is a hundred percent, 65% of the time will beat the pants off a Rob Lawrence who is at 65% a hundred percent of the time. Okay. It took me a minute to, to, I got yeah. you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it can be confusing. Yeah. So when I'm not at a hundred percent, I take a nap. Okay. Got it. I take a walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get myself to a hundred percent, maybe not a hundred, but at least in the high eighties. Yeah. And then I go, then the Goggins kicks in. Mm -hmm. Then I go. If I am competing Mm -hmm. it's all Goggins. Okay. It's all Goggins. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm going, it is all Goggins. There mm -hmm. is no nice guy in me to okay. myself mm -hmm. to, <laughs> and it's, it works for me. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I, I sort of separate them, mm -hmm. you know, just like, and I'm not a martial arts expert, right? but I know a few really, and they're that, most humble, like Mr. Rogers looking kind of people. Right. And um, no. uh -huh. could literally in seconds make you disappear. Um, and I just lost my train of thought, but they're, they're, they're so kind and gentle, mm -hmm. but they have this thing in them that when it has to come out, man, you see a force that is mm. mind boggling. You kept the train of thought because, like I said, that was the it, it's the it's the choices you brought up the brotherhood, by the way, which you shared with me privately. Uh, a group and and earlier you had talked about really kind and self, you know what I mean, self effacing and 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 all that sort of thing. Um, is that a trait now that you're finding more and more valuable, or is that just like days? Some people are this, some people are that, whatever, like. It seems to be coming up more often, that sense of being able to be kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, and we could go really deep here. I right. think the world, mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the United States mm -hmm. is hurting. Mm -hmm. I think we're hurting. I think we're scared. Mm -hmm. I think we're not living natural. And instead of saying, I'm right, you're wrong, saying, hey, man, tell me your story. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you don't like guys that have a gray goatee and wear a gray hat, instead right. of saying, F you, man, I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story that hurt you, that now you you don't like guys with gray goatees right. and gray exactly. hat. Like compassion, empathy. Like I, I want to be, and this is a big, like, uh, because my DNA, yeah. my Enneagram mm -hmm. is a protector. My biggest fear from my disc assessment, which by the way, disc assessments are awesome. I highly recommend uh, we all too, do but, them yeah. and continue to do them mm -hmm. because when I talk, even when I talk about them, I realize my biggest fear is being taken advantage of okay. and my time being wasted. I'm a high D high I. Blah. Right. And when I can step out of that mm -hmm. and instead of always wanting to defend or protect myself or others, yeah, just have the moment of, I wonder where that comes from. Mm -hmm. 
hey man, you seem like you're really angry. Like if you like, and like when you see me talk, like notice how my physiology, and I'll tell you where I learned this from. It's a funny I story. Definitely want to. I, I shrink down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be up here going, "Hey, tell me where that comes from." Hey man, I love that. Tell me where that comes from, man. I, I, I'm your brother, man. Mm -hmm. I, I want to, mm -hmm. I want to hear your pain. Mm -hmm. I was at a great event a few years ago with my son Eddie. It was yeah. a real estate expo. Okay. In, one of the most incredible investments I ever made. Two tickets, sixty nine or eighty nine dollars. Pitbull, Susie Orman, one of the Sharks, Grant Cardone. It was mind blowing. What Bunch we have deadbeats. <laughs> uh, Pitbull. If I didn't say, say the best of the best is you know what I mean. It, I got, and feet Tony feet. Robbins. And how about that? Tony. And Tony Robbins. Yeah. You know what so, I mean. So I am. It's oversold. Right. And there's no seats. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed my son, Eddie, and I'm like, dude, I, I, I've I been crewing with Anthony Robbins for a while. Mm -hmm. I know where he's coming out. He's coming out over here. Yep. Let's see if we can't grab him, right? Get a hug from him, whatever. So yeah. I go up there, right? Mm -hmm. And we're getting ready. The music's pumping, ready to go. And this guy comes up to me and says, hey, hey. And this is the fourth time now. Somebody came up to us and said, hey, hey, you can't stand here. You got to move. Yep. The caffeine was flowing. The mm -hmm. testosterone was flowing. I nice. said, I ain't moving. Mm -hmm. And he says, you have to move. I'm the head of security for mm -hmm. Anthony Robbins. Mm -hmm. I gave him a few choice words. I said, I don't give an F if you're blah, 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 blah. I ain't moving. Mm -hmm. We get chest to chest. And my son's behind me going like, oh my gosh. Exactly. Dude, I'm, I'm not a fighter. Right. right. We're chest to chest. And I'm like, dude, I ain't, you're going to have to move me. Mm -hmm. I'm not moving. Right. Psycho eyes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and he goes like this. Hey, man, I, I'm just trying to do my job. Oh. So what do you And doing? John, John, I go like this. <laughs> hey, man, I'm being a jerk. Just tell me where you want me to go. <laughs> right, right, right. So you're bringing up, I love how that felt. It sounds crazy. Folks, if you're just listening, you'll have to take my word for it. Watch the video part of this, which is there's a real gift to being able to, it's not even read people. That's terrific on its own. It's its being able to take the lead, uh, which is hard, especially in tense situations. You know, every, people are looking to have someone take the lead and often they want somebody to take the lead for them. Do you think that came from your captain of the football team sort of thing where that was expected of you to take the lead. And I mean more than take charge, you know, is, is that like your ability to be able to like go chest to chest and then follow the reactions to morph into a whole other different personality. Where do you think it came from? You know what? I would love to sit here and and let my ego shine and say, yes. <laughs> yep. I really think it's just my Enneagram type. I believe it's my disc type. It's just my, it's just how I'm wired. Yeah. Um, and that's not always good. Mm -hmm. I've I have um I've overreacted at times. I don't do it much anymore. Right. But um yeah, it's, I'm very proud, even though it's just naturally given to me. I'm very proud that my kids feel safe with me. Mm. I, had a, I had a woman mm -hmm. uh, at a 12 step meeting a couple weeks right. ago, uh, just say, Hey, you know, I just want to let you know when you're, when you're near me, mm -hmm. I feel protected. Mm. I feel safe. And just wanted to let you know that. And I was like, I'm very happy and it and it's mm -hmm. it's but it's it's nothing that you know that I worked on, but it's something I will say, just like a real estate agent working out of their strength zone. Yeah. I realize that's my strength zone. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have a problem stepping in and saying that that is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem saying, wait a minute, what did he say to you? Mm -hmm. I'm coming over and taking you out of your house now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem at all doing that.
at all. So it sort of comes naturally for me and I triple down on it. But, you know, one thing that, you know, when, when someone, uh, you know, I, again, just the best ways that is, is to tell a story. Like my job is to, uh, with, with these guys that are living at such a high level, my job is to say how, how my, my job is to say, Hey, I'm going to help you do more business. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. My job is to say, let's take a look at how you can F this whole thing up. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's talk about, mm -hmm. you know, the, the deadly sins mm -hmm. uh, with ego and booze and women and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff that could right. mess everything up for you. Yep. And they are so thankful mm -hmm. that I'm there. I'm there to protect their children and their, their, their their wives or their husbands from them got it their own legacy so to speak yeah. uh protect their legacy man so your coaching program has and continues to morph and i think when you were talking about the leaders that you found again andy frisella and um ed my as just two examples of you are allowing what you preach to also morph based upon your own time and experience. you We alluded to real quickly the four Bs that you had shared with me before. Um, give them to me again, please. Build your brain, yeah. build your body, mm -hmm. build your business, and build your brand. Somebody comes in feeling like lost. Mm -hmm. Where the hell do they start? Yep. With Gratitude list. Okay. Gratitude list right away. Okay. Gratitude list. What are you most proud of? Mm -hmm. What was your shining moment? Mm -hmm. right? And that, what that does is it stops the cortisol and the bad chemicals mm -hmm. and starts the good chemicals. So when I say build your brain, right. there are a couple of ways we do it. Number one is that. The other way is nutrition. Okay. Right. And it's about, this is all about an operating, uh, operating system. Mm -hmm. So I start with human beings with your operating system. We have to make sure that everything is operating at the highest level. But mm -hmm. when somebody comes to me like that, first of all, I won't let them sit down. I'll go, let's go for a walk real quick. Let's go. Hey, tell me 10 things real quick. What are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. Motion. Yeah. Okay. And I would imagine when you handle it that way, people are more inclined to comply uh, as it regards to actually doing what you say. And I don't mean forcing yeah. them. I simply mean wanting to like that willingness must come a little easier than. Yeah. So John floor. Maxwell, like John Maxwell always sure. says, if you think you're a leader mm -hmm. and you turn around and nobody's following you, then right. you're just going yeah, for a leader. walk. <laughs> and I took that literally. So, you know, who, and I could tell a thousand stories, people coming into my office or where I'm coaching from. Right. And they start, and I go, Hey man, Follow me. Let's just go for a walk. And they start following me. Oh, my God. Right? It's just like, let's go. Let's go. Tell me what's going on. If, but before we go there, tell me 10 things you're grateful for. And that starts going down this road. And a lot of times I'll go, so tell me, why did you want to see me anyway? And they'll go, hey, you know what? Actually, it's no big deal. Everything's cool. Um, <laughs> Ed, as you were saying that, I, I remembered a former boss in a former profession had to have been 30 years ago. God, I probably would have taken him far more seriously if I had realized what you were saying, because he did it all the time. Rick is his first name. I won't out him. But other than to say, just, he was always like, hey, come on, walk. He literally said, hey, come on, walk with me, walk with me. Um, and I interpreted it as, oh God, he's so busy. He can't even focus on me, mm. right? And and the way that you described it is just light years different. And, I, and for myself personally, I wish I had given that person more of a chance because <laughs> it could have very well been that, you know what I mean? Um, to bring you more into the game. Uh, I think it's beautiful. And I think that, that, again, to be able to help somebody in the present tense, look, you're doing something. Another reason I wanted you here is that you've created additional blueprints. And I find it interesting because one of the things I, I, I continue to like, respect, and acknowledge about you 
is that you walk into, uh, let's say, rough terrain. And so, and you continue to walk into rough terrain. So rather than taking the standard coaching blueprint, so to speak, um, you don't. And so I like the fact that we were able to walk backwards a little bit in regards to where it came from and how it's working. You're working a lot with AI and you're working a lot with business people and, and, and kind of like in my former career, when they were talking about digital and streaming television and me and a bunch of other people literally dismissed it like, Oh, who's going to worry about watching television on the internet. And apparently the answer is everybody. So <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah, don't need to worry about that sort of thing. What got you comfortable with the idea of, and I just stopped myself for a reason, uh, what got you comfortable with the idea of utilizing AI far more than a lot of people happen to be? I know you didn't invent it, and I know everyone is now running towards it. Why did you need to? Yeah, so... A few things. Number one, the dumbest statement I've ever made in my life as uh, in, in my professional life, call yeah. it, is uh, six, eight months ago. I actually put it out on social media. In, in three months, we won't even know what chat GPT is. It'll be. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, right. Hire oh, me. Uh, I'd me. have been right there with you. High five, like, boy. Yeah. Hire me for the head of technology. <laughs> so, so. Uh, as I learned about it, I thought, I... wow, it's it makes things really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to be creative. Yeah. Right. It, but the word that uh, is coming to me all the time now is leverage. Mm -hmm. How do I help people mm -hmm. leverage things that are out there mm -hmm. And that are right there and, and where it can be explained, where right. my thing is, show me, don't tell me. So mm -hmm. if somebody says, hey, uh, I'm going to show you or I'll, I'm going to tell you how chat GPT works. I'm going to black out oh. after 10 seconds. Right. But if 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 I were to say, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Mm hmm. I was doing a training in Orlando a few months ago and the uh, the event coordinator called me and said, hey, uh, can you give us a brief explanation? Can you give us an explanation of what the training is? And I thought, it's going to take me 10 days to write this. I don't have the attention span. Right. Chat GPT, hey, write a, a explanation in whatever it was, 200 words or less mm -hmm. in bulletproof form, what the three-legged stool of whatever I was doing. Yeah. Bam, copy, paste, bam, out. Mm -hmm. And they responded because they know me. They're like, all right, who wrote this for you? Right. Because I responded two seconds later. Mm -hmm. The other part is uh, getting back to like something that I implemented in my life right now mm -hmm. is quiet time, 20 mm -hmm. minutes of literally asking the universe. Mm -hmm. What do I need to know right now that's going to help the masses? Mm -hmm. So, and again, it just, I believe in quantum physics. I believe in that energy, that ripple right. effect that goes out. And what came to me was uh, this technology of database mining. And the first agent that I talked to mm -hmm. told me he had 22,000 people in his database. Mm-hmm. And I, this is after I did a little research of what, what does this AI stuff do with database yeah. mining and the chat mm -hmm. bot and the texting and AI voice, which isn't quite there yet. I got a favor to ask you. What to explain to the masses that may yes. not know, what is database mining? Yeah, database mining mm -hmm. is most real estate agents, and I, I would say most sales professionals, right. have a database. Mm -hmm. And let's say that database is 4,000 people. Yeah. Right. Out of those 4,000 people, mm -hmm. most of them only stay in touch with maybe 200. Ah, okay. The rest are people they've met in the past or met at an event or met whatever it is. Uh -huh. We're in it. And, and I'll speak to real estate agents and you can mm -hmm. decipher it however you want. Somebody that was at an open house of yours in 2011. Mm hmm right? That you just don't talk to. So, but, but they're people. 
-hmm. And there are people that need to refi. There are people that need to buy. There are people that need to sell, right? So this is where the science of achievement comes in. I talk about the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Yep. So the science of achievement is, okay, I can tell you right now, and I'm gathering more data. Right. If we mine that database of 4,000 people mm -hmm. with a, uh, a, a texting system mm -hmm. right, that's highly intelligent, mm -hmm. that I'm testing it now, like this literally is better than a person mm -hmm. because there's no emotion behind it. Right. Right. So when I say don't have time now, it doesn't respond with, what are you having a bad day? That was- Oh, really, oh right, was right, right. I thought you said all days are days. Um. <laughs> right, it just responds. Yeah. So, like now I can go database of 4,000 people. It's going to set 28 appointments for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to close 21 deals. Average sale price, 400,000. Mm -hmm. That's 8.2 uh, million in production. That equates to- Two hundred twenty six, eight hundred, two hundred twenty six thousand dollars in mm -hmm. inc found income mining a database. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa! It is blowing my mind that this stuff can literally, and this is in all industries, can literally go into your database, mm -hmm. read your notes. And say, hey, John, this is Gabby, Ed Fordyce's executive assistant. Mm -hmm. Ed just wanted to, he's on an appointment right now, but he wanted to thank you for having him on your podcast. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that he can do to help you today? Mm -hmm. And I don't even know it's doing it. Right. Wow. Mind yeah, the results. Dude, it makes me feel young. I feel like my afro is going to come back and I'm going to be wearing parachute pants. Well, here, oh, by I'm March. Open on both counts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I, but here's what I was going to ask. We talk about authenticity. We talk about the art of authenticity. You talk about your own, you know, your, yep. your own trudging forward. Do you get nervous in regards to the fact that when everything is handed, in essence, blueprints and stuff like that, that it takes your own individuality or authenticity away? No, I think it actually, and that's such a great question, man. I think it allows us to be more authentic, mm -hmm. real, and give better service and love mm -hmm. to our mm. tribe. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. take a look at a, uh, mm -hmm. a real estate agent schedule. If they're the perfect real estate agent. Yeah, say they're the really good ones, right? In and the morning, schedule. in the morning, they're lead generating. Mm -hmm. Then they have practice. Mm -hmm. Then they perform. And performing is either going to settlements or going on appointments, mm -hmm. right? Imagine if 80% of the lead generation was being done effectively mm -hmm. by AI. Mm -hmm. And I could call, now I had the time, energy, and bandwidth to call the 10 people that were settling with me in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. And just going, hey, hey, John, it's Ed. I know we're settling in 10 days, man. Yeah. I just wanted to check in to see if there's anything I can do for you. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling, by the way? Are you excited? Right. Do you have any questions? Instead of being this machine of, wait a minute, because real estate agents constantly have to be lead generating. Yes. If they're not lead generating, their business is going to be going up and down, mm -hmm. up and down, up and down. Man, systems. There's a saying, I know you've heard some of the great people in the Philly area. Mm. We all steal stuff. So I steal oh, it all. Good. Yeah. But it's from James Clear, Atomic, okay. Ato Atomic Habits. Right. That we don't rise... I'm mm -hmm. going to botch it. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level, level of our systems. Mm -hmm. So if our system is the human being, we're always going to fall and fail. Mm -hmm. When that system is a true system mm -hmm. that works nine hours a day, never calls out sick, mm -hmm. and has the intelligence of the smartest human being, mm -hmm. We can't lose, man. We can't lose. 
I find I love the answer, and I find for me um, in the usage of ChatGPT or Opus in regards to clips for recordings and podcasts and stuff like that, that not only would there be a never going back part, um, but it, it, it's that sense that you were saying it in my head from the field I was in, and it would be pretty much any field the same way too. Excel pivot tables would literally want to make not just my head blow up, but I would literally just start, I I would start crying in your arms. And I know you're a really good dude, but you just don't need me crying in your arms because <laughs> it's like, I can't grasp this. So I can still remember uh, a corporate business plan where I knew exactly what I wanted to say. I knew exactly where we were going, but because I had to wrestle with pivot tables, uh, the whole rest of the presentation was wrecked. I'm not mm. pointing fingers. I'm just saying that that was to me because I was focusing on all the wrong stuff. So I get into the room that day and I'm so worried about cell number E49795, like 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 your worst game of bingo, right? Mm. And, and and trying to, like, I couldn't ask answer the most basic of questions. And I sounded like adult. You know what I mean? In, in, in a room with a bunch of starch suitors. And, and so I I cheer this because it's one of those things where if it's used, as your words earlier, leverage, if it's used in terms of allowing you to be able to play to your strengths, if it's used in the way where you may not, maybe you're a building your own business, whether it's real estate, whether it's anything, communications, whatever, and you don't have the support staff that you need it, it, it's to me i think it's beautiful and and so i feel like you lean into this you said something earlier too and i and that's when i like literally tapped my own head which was like oh my god when you were saying that people are not all naturally gifted or willing to be making phone calls all day even though the old model was somebody wags a finger and says you know you're gonna need to make 50 calls an hour or whatever um, and you're like, well, I can't. You know what I was picturing, man? I was picturing you. <laughs> I was picturing you going toe to toe with the uh, security guy, <laughs> and in the scene, like the security guy's telling you, you need you need to make your fifty phone calls. You're like, I ain't doing it. Um, <laughs> and then people leave their fields, and and often for the wrong reasons. And they're like, well, this is just not for me. I don't feel authentic here. Yeah. And it's like you don't feel authentic because you're focusing on all the wrong things because you don't know. It's not because you're dumb. It, it's that you don't know. So I love the fact that you are at least enabling people, individuals, whether it's real estate, communications, whatever the corporate blueprint happens to be, to realize that maybe they should give themselves another week or another month. <laughs> yeah. You know, with try something uh, differently, you know. I want to help more human beings, especially in the real estate space, have a great quality of life. Mm, That's what okay. this comes down to. Mm -hmm. And most, there, there are two ways to generate. I learned this from mm -hmm. Adam Denunzio, uh, KW Jersey Shore. He did a training mm -hmm. on lead generation. He said, the first thing you have to know about lead generation is you either invest your time or you invest your money. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter which one you do. Mm -hmm. but you either, you invest one or the other. Right. If you're a natural lead generator, invest your time, do it, make calls. And what I, what I tell people is like, oh, did you want to be a, uh, did you want to be a telemarketer when you grew up? Mm -hmm. And they said, no. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why are you, why are you making a hundred calls a day? Like, how do you right. feel at the end of that? Again, it's not a sarcastic question. Mm -hmm. It's a quality of life question. Got it. What if we set up a system where you are just a lead converter? like mm -hmm. about 98% of the real estate agents are. And mm -hmm. there's no shame in that, man. Mm -hmm. There is no shame in that. Figuring out, all right, am I a better lead generator or am I a better lead converter? Mm -hmm. And again, quality of life is like, do you really want to wake up every day and dread that you have to do something? I don't know, man. Like, yeah, there's there's the the tough guy mentality mm -hmm. of grind. You got it. Mm -hmm. Wow, life goes by way too fast mm -hmm. to spend a minimum of ten hours a week doing something that you don't want to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I found, you know, I tried it, 
And I found this isn't my thing, man. Mm -hmm. It's not my thing. I'd rather create strategic partners. I'd rather do events. I'd rather work by referral. Mm -hmm. I'd rather add in some technology. I'm fine paying for technology when I can go, oh, here's a call coming in. Hello, this said, how can I mm -hmm. help you? Okay, great. Tell me, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, why do you want to live there? Okay, excellent. So let me tell you how I work. Option A, option B, option C. Mm -hmm. Great, which one's best for you? Awesome, I'll see you at six o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. We'll get your home listed. We'll start the home search. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, to me, I, th I think it sounds beautiful. Like you said, it's either your time or your money. Uh, one of the first jobs I ever had, and I talked about that that former boss that said, come walk with me, right? One of the most of it I got because I was good on the phone, right? Here's what I also know that I think that changes. I don't think it's a good, bad thing. I don't think you necessarily lose a skill set. I think you lose the mental bandwidth. I don't believe I am anywhere close to the cold caller that I was. And I do know that I work a million times better than I used to. But if you had to do the same thing, Excel pivot tables and cold calling, I I would... <laughs> Jesus, I'd get bounced. I'd get bounced onto my backside immediately, and 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 it just takes the spirit out of people. So that's why I love the idea. The theme that I keep coming back to here with you is the fact that you're able to drop your guard and therefore allow people to be able to drop their guard, but not land on their heads. You know what I mean? And and there's something nice about the fact that there's some sort of a solution here. Let me ask you this. You bring up quality of life. How would you, on a personal level, what would be an optimum quality of life for you? Doing what I want, when I want, as many times I want with who I want, for as long as I want. Where okay. I want. Like, that's it. That's okay. the ultimate quality of life. What do you wish for your uh, future grandchild that's coming what sort of a quality of life would you root for for them oh, it's not fair you ask that question dude i I cry when a new wawa opens in the neighborhood <laughs> so for my my little sophia constantina mm. what i want for her is to always feel whew, dude you hit me hard here mm -hmm. always feel that we always have her back, that she's loved and protected, that she's perfect just the way she is, that when she looks in the mirror, she sees nothing but beauty and greatness, a kind heart. And as soon as possible, knowing what she was created for mm. and, to, and to help as many people she possibly can. Mm. yeah that's a dude thank you so much for asking me that question that's beautiful wow man hey i feel like she's got a great head start in the sense that i thought of the woman that you shared with earlier saying to you that she feels safe and protected around yeah. you i get that i get that and i acknowledge that and i acknowledge you me too by the way um me too so for your grandchild that's coming that is to sit again that's a that is a wonderful head start uh, I got to tell you, um, I am thrilled that we get to continue the conversation on a personal level, on a business level, on a podcast level. Ed Fordyce, I know we've got edfordyce.com. What's the best way to stay in touch with you in addition as this story continues to unfold? Yeah, the best way I would say, uh, you could just text me, um, yeah. Yes. 610-246-6852. Um, you know, there's something, uh, this is not, uh, I, again, it's always about how do I, what are the solutions? I have a really cool, I believe it's really cool. Uh, I don't want to call it group coaching every Monday and Wednesday for real estate agents. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to have as many real estate agents making over 200,000 a year, mm -hmm. $97 a month. If somebody wants to Hop on as a guest to feel the vibe. You're always welcome to be my guest. Mm -hmm. uh, and something else I'm changing, dude, like if somebody wants to put forth the effort, but they don't honestly have the $97 a month. Right. Cool for let I'm cool to let you ride for two or three months, whatever, man. I why not? That's beautiful. 
uh, that sort of gratitude extended outwards is kind of fantastic. Last question for the moment, which is simply this. Uh, what does authenticity mean to you? Being comfortable in your own skin. Mm. Just being comfortable, knowing that I'm perfectly imperfect. And mm. my motive, my intent is always to love and help people. Mm. Nice. That's it. That's another great question, man. Thank you, brother. But if I had to nail it down to one thing, it would be being comfortable in my own skin. I think that's a hell of a start. Ed Fordyce, thanks so much for showing up for me and showing up for us. It is an absolute privilege to get to continue the friendship. And I get to see you in Philly. Yeah, I can't wait to have coffee with you, brother. Give you a big, big bear hug. hug. Count me in, brother. <laughs> Count me in and right back at you. Folks, you just heard another episode of Your Message Received. Keep liking, following, watching, sharing, telling your friends and family. We will keep heading toward that road of, or I'm sorry, the arc of authenticity. That road that works too. John Duffin here, Duffin Media, Duffin Coaching. Thrilled to be a part of your day. Keep coming back for more and we will talk soon. Bye now. And now, making its way across the finish line. Your message received has been a production of Duffin Media.